Hello and welcome to Chabot News for February 23rd, 2023. My name is Ariana Paricio and today we will be covering an explosion at an Ohio metal plant. The ever increasing cost of eggs and the return of the Shamrock Shake. We will also be taking our weekly looks at the latest in sports and entertainment. All that and more coming up on Chabot News. One person is dead and at least a dozen areas were injured on Monday, February 20th in an explosion at an Ohio metal factory that scattered debris over hundreds of yards, authorities said. Captain Brian DeRocco of the Oakwood Village Fire Department told reporters, firefighters were called at about 3 p.m. to a very large explosion with heavy fire and smoke at a metal plant in Bedford, Ohio, about 12 miles southeast of Cleveland. 13 people were taken to hospitals mostly for burn injuries. One person was in critical condition. Mary Louise Madigan, a spokeswoman for Cuyahoga County, later confirmed that a 46-year-old man had died. The company said that it was focused on supporting the authorities who came on scene quickly to help our employees. It added the safety and health of our employees is our top priority and we commit to ensuring they receive the medical care they need. The eggs prices are still going up at the grocery store. In fact, they saw more than 70% over the past year. In January, eggs were 8.5% more expensive than in December. That's according to government inflation data released Tuesday, February 22nd. Higher protection costs and the deadly avian flu outbreak are partly to blame for the high cost of eggs. But some egg producers are raking in high profits amidst the turmoil, sparking demands for a federal investigation into possible price gouging. Wholesale eggs have fallen since hitting a record peak in December, but companies are still charging record prices at the grocery store. If you need some help in purchasing those eggs or other grocery products, you're in luck because February 21st through February 24th is CalFresh Outreach Week here at Chabot College. If you're eligible for CalFresh, you could receive up to $188 a month for groceries, plus takes home some groceries from the Fresh Pantry. Check the, web the Shibble website at www.shibblecollege.edu slash student dash services slash CalFresh for more details on the event. A Bay Area man was arrested under the suspicion of killing his wife who vanished on Valentine's Day after the two left their Fairfield home. Greg Hobson, 61 years old, and Annu Hobson, 53 years old, were reported missing on February 15. Investigators come through traffic camera footage for the couple's silver Toyota Tacoma. The car was spotted on Elk Grove Boulevard in Sacramento and both were reported missing. A day later, Greg Hobson was in custody on suspicion of killing his wife. In a statement, police said, Anu has not been found and based on evidence collected thus far, we believe she has been killed. Hobson is being held at the Justice Center detention facility and has been charged with one count of murder. He was due in court on Tuesday, February 21st. No additional information will be released to reserve the integrity of the ongoing investigation. Police are asking for anyone who knows anything about Greg Hobson or a new Hobson or anyone who may have witnessed suspicious activity involving a 2021 Toyota Tacoma with license plate number 21170G3 to call the Fairfield Police Department's investigation unit at 707-428-7600. Now we return to Don who is here to bring us this week's entertainment news. I hope you have some good news to share with us, Don. Well, I'll sure give it a try, Ariana. However, it might be a little difficult because this first story is a little sad. For you see, the son of rock legend Jerry Lee Lewis is being forced out of the ranch where his father lived. The ranch is in Mississippi, just south of the state line from Memphis, Tennessee. It turns out Lewis's name is not on the deed. Parker King has the story. This drama is damaging the legacy. Mary Jane Ferguson is the daughter of Cecil Harrelson, Jerry Lee Lewis's longtime friend from growing up in Louisiana, later his manager and brother-in-law, marrying Lewis's sister, Linda Gale Lewis. He's also the man whose name is on the deed for the Lewis Ranch in Nesbitt, particularly to protect the property from being seized by the IRS. Lewis had a history of run-ins with them for failure to pay taxes. He wanted to protect the ranch. 
but he also wanted to reward my dad. My dad was loyal to him. Uncle Jerry was like a lifetime tenant that didn't pay rent. So in other words, he could live there until he passed away. Harrelson passed in 2013, passing the ranch to Mary Jean and her two siblings. A third of the property is also owned by the descendants of attorney Carlton Barnes, payment for doing legal work for Harrelson in the 70s. All the descendants have decided to sell the ranch. Lee Lewis, the youngest son of Jerry Lee, who has been living on the property, took to Facebook, saying the news of the sale shocked him. He since started a GoFundMe with a goal to raise $80,000 for a down payment on the home, saying in part, quote, It is clear that Dad was confident he owned the ranch and that it would go to me when he passed. Cecil Harrelson passed away before my father and thus did not have the opportunity to honor my father's wishes. Instead, he left his interest in the ranch to his own children. What concerns me is people donating to something that is, 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 that's not based in fact. According to the youngest Lewis son, he's been ordered to vacate the home by March 5th. I, I don't wish him any ill, but we have to do what's right for us and, and do the best we can. Thanks, Parker. The late Jerry Lee Lewis lived in the home for about 50 years. Well, now it's time for some movie news. Yeah! Well, for your, for your weekend viewing pleasure, we have the latest look at a film with multiple superheroes, and then a return of a Hollywood classic. Here's Dave Danielle with today's Hollywood Minute. Time has a pattern that it can't help reliving. Different people, different worlds, drawn to each other like magnets. My face. So my face. Ezra Miller has double trouble in the first full trailer for The Flash. When the high-speed hero travels to the past, he messes up the future, creating not only two of himself, but jumping Batman timelines, going from Ben Affleck all the way back to Michael Keaton. Yeah. I'm Batman. We also get General Zod and a glimpse of Supergirl. The Flash zips into theaters June 16th. Of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world, she walks into mine. One of the most acclaimed films of all time is returning to theaters. A restored and remastered copy of Casablanca, which won Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Screenplay Oscars, will screen in participating cinemas on Sunday, March 5th and Wednesday, March 8th. Check FathomEvents.com for locations and tickets. He's looking at you, kid. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Thanks, Dave. Well, <laughs> that's it for this week's entertainment. I'm Don Wright. So, how did I do, Ariana? Nice job, Don. I knew you could help lighten the mood up a little. In fact, your last report is a perfect segue into our next story. In Shabot College related news, the Extended Opportunity Programs and Services, EOPS for short, will be having a movie night on March 2nd. The movie they will be showing is We Were Hyphy. It is a documentary based on the pop culture hip hop subgenre hyphy, which exploded in the Bay Area in the late 1990s. The movie primarily focuses on the musical artist, dance, fashion, and the vibe that the movement gave birth to. The third to join EOPS from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. on March 2nd in the Chabot College Event Center, located in Building 700, Room 722. Here are police say an 11-year-old girl who was reported missing on Monday, February 20th in the early afternoon was found safe in Oakland a few hours later. Here are and Oakland police are still investigating the case. Approximately 1.30 p.m. on Monday, February 20th, Hayward Police issued an Amber Alert stating that an 11-year-old girl was missing and last seen on Foothill Boulevard near the Safeway Plaza Center. A short time later, Hayward Police confirmed the girl had been found in Oakland's Leona Heights neighborhood. Greg Strand, one of the residents nearby, said he heard yelling outside as he was coming out of his house. He saw a girl scurry out of a white seat on screaming and running towards his neighbors. The neighbors helped the girl and took her into their house until the Oakland police arrived. Investigators have not yet released any other details about who the girl was with or how she got to Oakland, 
The Hayward Police are investigating and hope to have more information soon. Now let's turn to Angelisa with sports news. Thanks, Ariana. We start today with a story that happened right here on campus. The Chabot men's basketball team won 104 to 87 against Skyline on January 25th. Sophomores Jaden Rivera and David Hector were the two Chabot players that scored the most points during the game, scoring 19 and 18 points respectively. Freshman starter Diggy Winbush also stood out by scoring 15 points and getting four assists. After the game, David Hector and Jaden Rivera, numbers 20 and 32, agreed that their overall defense could be improved going into the next game. And since then, the men's basketball team has played one game against Foothill College, in which they won 93 to 87 on January 27th. The team has earned much of its success because they work hard, which with three hour practices every day, it is no surprise that the team is as strong and in sync as they are. At a recent pro hockey game, a little boy got almost as much attention as the players. The four-year-old Michigander couldn't figure out why the crowd was cheering for him. Video of him is now going viral, as Jeannie Moose reports. It was George's first hockey game, and the Jumbotron ate him up, Detroit Red Wing fans booing, opposing fans from Vancouver and cheering. Every time George came up, even if he didn't quite get it, the opposition the home team. George finally cracked a smile and went viral. King George, they called him. I see a George bobblehead night. But it didn't give George a big head. It, like he didn't know it was about him and just kept saying like, yes, red team's winning. Chelsea Miller describes her four-year-old son as shy amid a whirlwind of attention. There were probably at least a hundred people that asked to stop to take pictures with him and high fives and can I get an autograph even. Mom says they were hoping his sign would get George on camera, but they weren't expecting this. Everyone just made it so special for us. University of Michigan hockey wondered, George, do you need a Michigan jersey for the next game? George's grandma here and he definitely needs a jersey. George reminded one poster of Mikey. Remember Mikey? He likes it. Hey, Mikey. Now everyone likes George, even Vancouver fans. Jeannie Mose, CNN, New York. Thank you, Jeannie, for that amusing story. That's going to wrap it up for this week's sports news. I'm Angelisa Dominguez, and now back to you, Ariana. Thanks, Angelisa. That little boy is so cute. Now we go from a four-year-old boy to a 102-year-old woman. Some people say the strongest muscle in our body is the mind, and this woman works on hers every day. Four, five, six. Jean Bailey is all business. Seven, eight, nine. As she leads this class. It's a half an hour exercise that does your whole body. Jean doesn't just talk the talk. If you do anything, do it right. At 102, she walks the walk. I just think it's so important to keep your body busy as well as your mind. And it's very important to keep your mind occupied. Four times a week, she coaches her neighbors at Elk Ridge Assisted Living Center in Elkhorn. She's the oldest and toughest. They say I'm mean. You're mean? <laughs> Oh, no, never. Only teasing. Never, yeah, only teasing. <laughs> Six, seven, don't get ahead of me, eight, <laughs> nine, <laughs> ten. Sometimes they just fly. Flapping, lifting, lunging forward. It's good for us. We need, we need that. Jean says she needs this, too. I'm trying to keep everybody walking and able to be on her own. And she's not done yet. Okay, with practice. Jean plans to keep coaching as she lives her life to the fullest. God lets us stay around like this, and I'm not sure why, so I, there's things I must have to do yet. Wow, Miss Bailey is such an amazing woman. She is a perfect example for everyone on the importance of maintaining a physical strength and mental equity as we enter our golden years. 
And our final story should put a smile on your face and leave a good taste in your mouth. Just in time for St. Patrick's Day, McDonald's is bringing back its popular shamrock shake. The holiday themed shamrock shake debuted in 1970. It was so popular that McDonald's released a second version of the shake in 2020, mixed with crushed Oreo cookies. Both drinks are available at participating McDonald's restaurants nationwide. If you want one, you better hurry. The sweet treats will only be available while supplies last. That's all for Chabot News this week. Thanks to all the students and staff in the Mass Communications Department here at Chabot College for making this production possible. You can watch us anytime online at youtube.com slash TV. Stay tuned to KCTH Channel 27 for more Chabot TV.